And I think of all the kids that's ever played for me. All of that and that championship means to me what those kids have done for me to make me who I am and what I believe and their families, all those mothers and fathers I've talked to over the years, I think of that. I know that you wanted me to have a little small comment, but this is important to me, and tonight is these young men's night from the University of Arkansas. And so I would close my comment by saying that I appreciate my wife and family who have stood by me in tr trying to help me solve the problems that we have. Again, it's one of the greatest basketball games, one of the greatest feelings I've ever had from a standpoint of athletics. I've had a lot of great feelings in my life, but they didn't all deal with athletics. But I am so proud of the young men that come up here tonight and how they handled themselves when we were 10 points behind and go back out on that floor and represent the University of Arkansas, themselves, their family, and their basketball coaches. And I'm very proud of every coach that had anything to do with me as a high school kid, and I'm proud of every coach that helped me bring kids as assistant basketball coaches. It's just a great feeling. And all of those people are the ones I cherish. With that, I'll leave it open. Okay, let's take some questions for the players. First one here in mic number two. Hey, could you talk about the three-pointer that broke the tie? How aware were you of the shot clock? How aware were you of Lang flying at you and just the whole sequence there? Well, I saw um, the shot clock running down. I saw Corey Beck pass the ball to Dwight Stewart, and he never really got a handle on it. And I think when he passed to him, I think it was like three seconds left on the shot clock, and he gave it to me. So I really had no, no choice but to, but to put the shot up. In just a moment, the reaction from our big three. Yes, you guys will be going back. Turning point. <clears throat> so, you know, it was kind of hard for me, uh, you know, to stand mentally because, you know, I was missing some easy shots I felt I should have made. But, you know, we all had a main goal in, in our mind. That was winning national championships. So in order for that to happen, you know, I had to stay focused myself. And, uh, you know, I thank my teammates and my coaches for that. They helped me stay focused out there. Okay, let's go to mic number two, and we'll come back to mic number one. Uh, Corliss, you had a Grant got his hand on a shot by Dwight from up in the key, and you got a three-point play on kind of grabbing the air ball, uh, almost like Lorenzo Charles did for NC State. Uh, was it important that you followed the flight of it so you knew it wasn't even going to get there and, and be a real rebound? And what do you remember about that play? Uh, yes, I knew when uh, the shot went up, it looked like Grant had tipped it and, and like it was going to come short. So I went ahead and jumped up, and fortunately for me, uh, the ball came straight to my hands. I just went up and, you know, I got tapped on the arm. I got a foul and put the ball in the hole. Uh, just happy that I had a chance to do that for the team. Okay, let's go to mic number one. <clears throat> yeah, for the players. All season long, you guys have responded to challenges. This is nothing new tonight. But kind of share with us what went through your minds when Duke made the run. You guys are down 10. What you guys say to each other to pull yourselves together and go on the spurt? Who else you want to go first? Yeah. Well, uh... <clears throat> We know that the game was won in 20 minutes, I mean in 40 minutes, you know, and uh, we had to play the whole game out. You know, there's been times before we've been behind and we were able to just go out and play hard and be able to come back into the game. So we knew that's one thing we had to do was go out there and execute well. You know, we had lost a little bit of composure out there. So we went back and we gained our composure and we continued to work hard. And, you know, we do missed a few shots here and there. We hit a few shots and, uh, you know, put us back into the game. And from there we just went on. When we were down 10, you know, we just tried to gut it up. You know, Corey Beck and Clint McDaniel, you know, kept us up on defense, you know, trying to pressure them, you know. We just felt like our defense was going to eventually help us make some shots on the offensive end. You know, we finally got back in the ball game. We felt like we were taking the best shots, so we could call it in the win ball game. Okay, let's go to mic number four, and we'll come back to mic number two. Okay, let's go to mic number two. Uh, for Scotty and Corliss right here. Uh, can you talk specifically defensively? Uh, in the first half, uh, it seemed like they were breaking – Finding the open spots in your defense and getting some easy layups, what was the difference in the second half where they weren't getting those kind of looks at the basket? And uh, also, if you could say, how many minutes of hell you actually played tonight? 
Well, we, we try to keep, you know, Grant Hill off balance. You know, I think in the first half, we try to send a lot of traps at him and make him get rid of the basketball and make some other guys step up and hit the shots. You know, unfortunately for him, you know, some guys hit those shots. But as the game went down, we just tried to play him straight up, you know, just one-on-one -on -one and not really try to trap him as much. You know, I think eventually, you know, he had to try to create his own shot and he was having a hard time. Yeah, you know, we just had to gut it up in the second half and play tougher defense than we did in the first half. And you know, we were able to do that. Like Scotty said, you know, we guarded him straight up. And uh, we were able to, you know, prevent some of the things uh, that he had done early in the first half. Okay, let's go to mic number one. We'll come back to mic number two. Scotty, after the uh, three-pointer, it seemed as if you went to the middle of the court, looked at the CBS people and said something. Did, did you say something to Billy Packer after that? No, I wasn't saying anything to Billy Packer. I was saying something to the fans that were back there who felt as, as though they seemed, seemed as though they didn't want us to win the ball game. You know, I think when I hit that shot, they, they kind of went in shock, you know, and they got extremely quiet. You know, I was just proud to hit the shot. What, what did you say to the fans? No, I just said, um, you're surprised about that, huh? Okay, let's go to mic number two, and then we'll go to mic number three. Scotty, uh, Coach talked about how uh, it was basically a heavyweight fight, my turn, your turn. Did you feel that, that when, when you hit that three-pointer, that that was the decisive blow and that, and that you, the fight was going to be over at that point? And, and, and then also comment on the play of Coy Beck tonight. Uh, it seemed like when things were going tough, he held you guys together. Well, I feel like that, that shot was definitely a big shot. You know, I felt if, you know, that shot, when, this, when it went down, I felt like you know, we were going to win the ball game and as long as we made our free throws and take care of the basketball. You know, and Corey Beck is, you know, he's our inspirational leader. You know, a lot of people don't give him the headlines that he, he deserves, but, um, you know, he's the heart and soul of the basketball team, and I think he showed, his, showed that by his efforts today. Okay, let's go to mic number three, and we'll come back to mic number one. Yeah, Scotty, could you go through the shot again? Did you have to adjust it, or it looked like even higher than you usually shoot it? Did you have to make any adjustment on it? Um, yeah, I tried to. Tried, I just tried to get over his hand, you know, I think there was an Antonio Lang who, who flew at me and, you know, he's a 6'8 guy and he jumps pretty high, so I just tried to get over. Okay, let's go to mic number one. Fellas, do you feel like uh, you have been rewarded for the tough season that you had, that people recognize you as the best team in the nation now? Uh, I think, what player did you want to answer that? Both. Both. Um, I, th I think, you know, regardless of what people think now, you know, they can call us. All names they choose to call us, but as long as they place the national champs behind it. Yeah, you know, we worked so hard this year. Um, you know, we felt like we didn't get the respect that we deserved. So uh, now that we've done the, uh, the, the big thing, you know, win the big one, you know, uh, what else can people say? You know, there's nothing else to say. We proved to everyone that we were on the team this year. And, you know, I guess now we're starting to get what we deserve. Okay, let's go to mic number two. We'll go to mic number three. Uh, Scotty, after your three... Uh, Collins put up a three that would have tied the game, and it looked like the rebound kicked out on the left baseline. And I think you got it. Do you remember anything about getting that rebound after he missed that shot? Well, I was just trying to, you know, be quick to the basketball because I think you know, they were kind of killing us on the boards at some point. And I think it was Cherokee Park, so I, tr I just tried to hustle for the rebound. And I was lucky enough to get it. Okay, let's go to mic number three. Well, there it is. The uh, activity taking place, of course, back here in the press room. Duke coach Mike. Arkansas, Dan Ferreter. Is this wheat or what? You know, I watched basketball all year long on television, and every time the camera would fan, there'd be somebody, he'd be behind 14 to nothing, and he'd be holding up one finger. That's wishful thinking. In basketball, you don't need wishful thinking. At the end of the year, you know who's number one, and they're here tonight. That number one includes you, our students, you, our fans, the Hogwild Band, the cheers, the palms, the mascots, the coaches, most of all, these guys right here. They're number one.
It's nice to be in, back in Walton Arena. We've been on the road for about a month. We're really pleased with the support you gave us Monday night. Arkansas fans and Arkansas students are a class act, nothing else. You're a class act. You always have to sum up a season and sum up a team and sum up a vision. The Charlotte newspaper summed it up as well as anybody else could. The headline said, respect. <laughs> this year, the Razorbacks earned respect in Charlotte. Next year, they'll be sleepless in Seattle. We had to earn our respect in Charlotte. Here in Fayetteville, we've always had it. And to show that respect is the mayor of Fayetteville, Fred Hanna. We'll return with more of the welcome home celebration for the national champions from Bud Walton Arena in just a moment. Uh, opened up Raymond. the program with comments about the cheerleaders, the band, fan behavior. Even got in a plug right for next here, year's Robert. Final Four by saying next year, Arkansas will be sleepless in Seattle in reference to an outstanding movie. John right A. now, John. the mayor of Fayetteville, the Honorable Fred Hanna, is presenting congratulatory citations and medallions to all of the Razorback players. Uh, they appear, from our vantage point, to be very, very similar Arnold to Robinson. Olympic gold medals, but they are uh, medallions that have reference, of course, to the city of Fayetteville and how proud Fayetteville is to be the home of not only the national champions, but the University of Arkansas. Dr. Fred Vorsinger, who is the manager of Bud Walton Arena, is placing the medallions around the neck. That's Lee Wilson, the 6'11 freshman center out of Waco, Reggie Texas, Merritt. receiving his Reggie Merritt. One of the walk-ons being introduced, Alex Dillard just being presented uh, his particular Elmer medallion. Martin. Elmer Martin being called up. This is such a young basketball team. The two freshmen, Lee Wilson, of course, Congratulations, and also John. Darnell really Robinson, who did such year. an outstanding job all during the regular season. So there's the presentation, and now back to the podium and Chancellor Ferrer. Sports Illustrated tonight making a special presentation is Robert Franz and Kerry Nolan. Coach Richardson? Where are they? I'd like to present you the very first copy hot up the press of Sports Illustrated featuring the 1994 NCAA basketball champions. There's a plaque. tonight to help congratulate the team is an alumni, former Razorback athlete, president of the University of Arkansas system, Dr. Alan Sugg. Guys, thank you very much, Dan. I just want to say once again to you, Nolan, Coach Richardson, and Rose, and the other coaches, and the Razorbacks, and the trainers, and everybody, you have made all the people in Arkansas extremely happy and extremely proud to be from Arkansas when you beat Duke and won the national championship. You know, I thought it was going to feel good, but it feels better than good. It feels fantastic. We're, we're, not, only, we're not only the national basketball champions, we're also the national t-shirt capital of the world. And now, it gives me great pleasure to introduce to you, wait a minute, Dale, Dale Warren, the best band in the land, the Hogwild Band. The world's greatest cheerleaders, Pom Pom Squad, and that fabulous Razorback mascot. And they will play a song and raise that flag and you'll see why Arkansas is so proud.
We'll pause right here and return with more of the celebration from Bud Walton in just a moment. They saw him in the Saturday come from behind in the second half. They saw him Monday come from behind in the second half because they had it in here, right in the heart. And that's what we love about this team. No one gave us much of a chance in the conference race when we were two games behind the leaders in February, on February the 1st. We had to go to Kentucky. We had to play in Baton Rouge, Athens, and Knoxville, and other places. And we ended up two games ahead of the crowd. Nine years ago, oh, first, let me say to this team on behalf of everybody in Arkansas, you have given us more self-esteem, more pride in what you've accomplished. You've brought us together, and we thank you for what you are, what you've done, and what you've accomplished. Thank you very much. Nine years ago, we had a coaching vacancy. I will tell you that I thought at that time and believed there was only one coach who had all of the attributes that we needed to take us to the highest level. There were about 15 coaches out there that could have kept us going at a competitive level, winning one or two games in the NCAA and being competitive, but there was only one coach in the entire United States that I thought could take us to the highest level. The greatest coach in the country, Nolan Richardson. I mean it, too. That was my belief then. Thank you. 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 I want to introduce to you. Thank you. Thank you. I got some players I want to introduce to you. I'll say something in a few seconds, but I've got uh, four players I want to introduce to you, and I'll call one up, one by one of the top four, our two seniors and our, and our two guys that have made all conference first team, all American. We'll start off with uh, Scotty Thurman. Scotty. I'm kind of shy, so don't, don't, don't scream, please. Uh, first of all, I'd just like to say that it was a pleasure for me to pay for this team, for this coach, and to have these fans support me. And on my behalf and the team's behalf, I'd just like to say that this championship is not only for us, but for you also. Thank you. The next speaker that will come to you is from this great state of Arkansas, from Russellville, Carlos Williamson. Oh. 
Hold it down a little bit, please. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for all your support. You know, we come down here at the beginning of the year and work at 6.30 in the morning, 6 o'clock in the morning. It's a lot of hard work. And for us to win a national championship, it's just like a dream come true. We have a wonderful coach. We have a wonderful team, wonderful administrative staff, but we also have the greatest fans in America, and that's here in my home state, Arkansas. The young man that played for us that got hurt, he's a senior, he's leaving us. We're very proud of him. We love him. We know he'll be successful. Roger Crawford. Um, I would like to thank you all for coming out here tonight and help celebrate this with us. Uh, we couldn't have done this without y'all because y'all cheered us on every game. Y'all was an extra burst of energy for us during every game. And uh, on behalf of the players, we'd like to thank all of you again. And th this was just part one, and it'll be a part two next year. Our last, but not least, a kid that is a senior, been with us for four years, also from the great state of Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Ken Biley. It's all good. When I first came to the University of Arkansas, one thing I noticed, we had a small arena, Barnhill. We complained about Barnhill being so small, the city capacity, so we made a plan. We built Bud Walton. Here we are now. Our second goal was to accomplish. Our uniform was so tight, we couldn't run up and down the court. So we solved that problem. We wear the big, long, bag of silk shorts. But one problem we did never complain about, and that's the love and support of our fans. You're number one. But one thing I want to say, that my stay at the university has been the best. And it went from you guys, we wouldn't be here today. So my last thing is how sweet it is. Thank you. We, we will miss the two seniors, all of our hearts go out to them, and all of our wishes that they will be successful in whichever endeavor they 
choose to be in. I like to say something real quick, real short. This has been a great, great year. We've had some great people that work with this basketball team. We've had the assistant coaches, Stalix, Nolan, Brad, Mike, Kate.